Hey, what is up, Flavor Family? It's Bobby, and today we are gonna rock the ultimate chicken thigh three different ways. Because a few weeks ago, I did the ultimate juiciest chicken breast three ways, and you guys absolutely loved it. I thought we'd graduate to my favorite cut of chicken, the chicken thigh. So first, we're gonna do it in the oven with a super easy spice rub until it gets nice and crispy. Then we're gonna do it in the pan with a beautiful spice rub, boneless, skinless chicken thighs until they're crusty as can be, and we're also gonna do it my favorite way that employs the pan and the oven that gives you honestly the most crispy skin you could ever get shy of deep fat frying. So before you rock these recipes, hook me up, baby. Subscribe to my channel. Every single week we are rocking out healthy, delicious recipes and I would love for you to join the Flav City community. All right, in front of me, I have two bone on, skin on chicken thighs. For me, pound for pound, these are the best chicken cuts you can get because the skin has fat and flavor, the bone has fat and flavor, and unlike chicken breast, chicken thighs have more fat, they have more love, they have more flavor. So anytime you can go for the ultimate cut, I would do this. Before we get them in the pan and the oven for my favorite technique, we have to do a couple chicken rules. Number one, we take the skin, we pat it dry. Moisture is the enemy to crispy skin, so go ahead, and just pat the chicken, get all the excess moisture off of the skin. And then that brings me to my chicken rule number two. Art, get in here. Why do we never put cold meat or cold chicken into a hot pan or a hot oven? Which by the way, I'm preheating at 475 degrees. They've heard you say it before, haven't they? Yeah, but in case they haven't heard. Because you don't want to put cold chicken into a hot pan. But I just said that, why? <laughs> You're just repeating my statement with no information. <laughs> it's because we'll drop the temperature of the pan and the meat's gonna cook unevenly. Thank you, Art. <laughs> now, to add a little, no, we're not doing it again. To add a little more flavor to this chicken thigh, I'm gonna sprinkle over a good pinch of salt, a little bit of smoked paprika, a little bit of cayenne pepper. Flip the chicken over and just do a little more salt. And then rub the spices into the skin. All right, wash those chickeny hands. Grab a cast iron pan that I was preheating back there. Now, in the chicken breast video, I washed my hands probably like 20 some odd times, but we never showed on camera. So a bunch of the comments, if you go over to that video, are like, cross-contamination city, is this guy an idiot? No, of course I washed my hands. I just didn't think it'd be riveting to watch, but now I'm showing it. So preheat your pan over medium high heat and then add a tablespoon of avocado or grapeseed oil. All right, this is why I love this technique. We're gonna start the chicken thighs in the pan, skin down, transfer to the oven, skin down, and then flip it. And I'm telling you, it is the crispiest skin chicken you've ever seen. It's quick and the chicken cooks through nice and juicy. So as soon as the pan starts to kind of shimmer with the heat like that, I'm gonna add my chicken thighs. By the way, I'm not using olive oil here because uh, this is a higher temperature and it might start to burn a little bit. So go with the chicken skin side down. And that's what you want. If the pan and the skin aren't sizzling immediately, yank the chicken out, wait 30 more seconds because you wanna hear that. As soon as this goes down, grab your splatter guard. This will save you a lot of time cleaning up. Slap that down and let it go for eight minutes without even touching it. All right, it's been eight minutes. Are you guys ready? This is legit. Take the splatter guard off. Let's flip this over. And this is why you use the splatter guard. You see that oil jumping everywhere? That's all about letting the chicken do its thing, not touching it once it hits the pan. Right, that golden kind of caramelized crusty skin. So now what I wanna do, I wanna put the splatter guard back on. I said I have the oven going at 475. I'm just gonna chuck it in the oven now for about 10 minutes. And I'm leaving the guard on so my oven doesn't get covered in oil too. And then set a timer for nine minutes. And by the way, if you do not have the oven glove, you need it, man. I kept using these silicone placeholders or mats, burning my fingers and hands left and right. I finally got these on Amazon for $10. They're the best investment ever. I will hook you down below with the uh, Amazon links. All right, the time is up. Let's flip the chicken. Oh, come on, you guys. Look at that skin. That is so crusty and golden brown. It is ridiculous. All right, put it on the other side. Put the splatter guard back on and set a timer for three more minutes. All right, you guys. The final three minutes are up. The chicken and the kitchen smell amazing. Let's get these out of the pan. Look at this, come on. Look at the skin on that chicken. Have you ever seen golden crispy chicken like that coming from the oven? No way, dude. All right, now listen, as tempting as it is to cut into this juicy, golden, lacquered, crispy chicken right now, you have to wait five minutes. Why? 
Think about it, the juices inside right now are almost at the boiling temperature. If I cut into that, the juices are gonna run out and the chicken's gonna dry out. So wait five minutes and then we will. Yes, we will devour. <laughs> it can get... <laughs> this is what I do for you guys. I want that effect going into your ears, guys. All right, let's stop playing with our chicken. It's been resting for five minutes. Art is literally salivating. So let's come in and try this before we move on to the next technique. Try it. You ate the whole skin in one gun. Why not? I like that method there. Yes, look at that. The meat is perfectly cooked through. Juicy as can be. But that skin, right? It's like a chicken chicharron. This is proper, it's seasoned, it's salty, everything you want. All right, let's finish this. Then we're gonna move on to the simple oven baked spice crusted chicken thigh. Okay, for chicken thigh number two. Go ahead. Number two. Number two. Mr. Says cock a doodle doodle. <laughs> That's going in there. That's oh going God, there. That's all going in there. Name the reference of the movie down below. This is what Art and I do. If you guys knew the other Seinfeld and pop references, it'd be ridiculous. <laughs> All right, for chicken thigh technique number two, we're gonna do the oven roasted technique, which is super easy. I'm preheating the old oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and I have two more bone-on, skin-on chicken thighs in front of me. Once again, let's pat these dry, get rid of any moisture. And these are at room temperature, but if they weren't, if you just got them straight from the chill chest, you'll put the spice rub on like I have now and let it sit for 20 minutes. That way, while the chicken's coming at room temperature, that marinade is doing its thing. Speaking of the marinade, let's keep it really simple. I'm gonna sprinkle over a little bit of kosher salt, some sweet paprika and some black pepper, then flip the chicken over and just do a little bit of salt and pepper. Then add a little shot of avocado oil to enhance the browning in the oven and transfer to a sheet tray. All right, Art, get in here. Tell us why we're putting the chicken on a, what's this called again? On a rack. On a rack in the sheet tray, please. So this will get the chicken up a little higher so that the lip of the pan isn't blocking it and that gets more airflow under it. Should maybe help it cook a little more evenly. Lip, Miss Lippy. Another Billy Madison reference. This is what we do all day, people. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> All right, let's set a timer for 50 minutes for the oven chicken thighs. And in the meantime, we can get going on the boneless, skinless chicken thighs. We're gonna do them with the spice rub. We're gonna do them in a cast iron pan and a nonstick pan to see the difference. And it starts with four boneless, skinless chicken thighs in front of me. We can up the flavor big time without adding any fat and without adding any calories by making a simple spice rub, starting with a little bit of smoked paprika, about a half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of ground cumin, a quarter teaspoon of ground coriander, a quarter teaspoon of dried thyme, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Hit the chicken up with a generous pinch of salt and then half of the spice rub. Flip the chicken over, do some more salt and some more spice rub. And then add a shot of avocado oil and just rub it in. That helps the spices absorb into the chicken. All right, washing my hands again. I have to show you guys. Now I'm preheating both pans back here. I got my cast iron pan and I got my nonstick pan over medium high heat. I always cook my chicken in cast iron because nothing sears chicken quite like cast iron. The way it evenly distributes the heat, the way it retains that heat, but I thought why not, since we're in a Bobby's Basics kind of video, do it in a nonstick pan, it's still gonna work, right? But I wanna show you the difference between the crust between the two pans. I have them going over medium high heat. Let's add a couple teaspoons of avo oil. All right, once oil goes in the cast iron pan or the nonstick, wait 30 seconds, kind of swirl that oil around. The goal is to have a hot pan and a hot oil as soon as the chicken goes in. All right, once again, that's what we want to hear, that sizzle. All right, now the key to making this the crustiest chicken thigh ever is not touching it, right? Wait four minutes, then flip it over. The more you touch the meat, whether it's chicken, steak, pork chops, the more you interfere with that crust being made. Just let it adhere to the bottom of the pan, get all that heat into the crust, then flip it once. We'll wait three more minutes and then we're done. All right, it's been four minutes. Let's flip the chicken. Ah, oh, beautiful. Look at this crust on that, you guys. It is just golden brown and seared to perfection. Let's flip the uh, nonstick. Wow, I don't know, that looks pretty good too. All right, let's let it go another three minutes and then we'll see the uh, results. All right, last one is out of the pan. That's the nonstick one. I don't know, what do you guys think? Take a look at this, right? These two over here are the cast iron pan. These two over here are the nonstick. I think maybe I can detect a little more kind of rich, deep, dark crust on the cast iron, but it's pretty close. 
We're gonna wait three minutes once again because we can't cut into the chicken now before we dive in. But I really think the key is cast iron, steel, nonstick, room temperature chicken, preheat that pan for two minutes over medium high heat, add the oil, wait 30 seconds, and then go in. If you follow those rules every time, you are gonna be a winner winner chicken dinner, baby. All right, let's slice up one of these chicken thighs. Perfect. Nice crust on there. And look at the inside. See how juicy that is? That's what I love about cooking in the pan. All right, we have a cutting board full of sliced hot chicken. You know Art and I are gonna devour this. The crust, me guy. I mean, come on. Mmm. Not as crispy as the pan oven combo, mm -hmm. but I heard some crunch there, so it's pretty good. True. You're not gonna have the same, well, we don't have the skin on here, too. Still, you got crunch on there. We do. That spice rub. It's the generous amount of salt. Remember, salt is bland. It needs flavor. A little bit of salt, a little more than you think, is gonna be needed. All right, so this was a great success. We got three more minutes on the oven chicken. We'll pull that, and well, I guess we'll eat it too. Like All right. All right, you guys, 50 minutes on the dot. Check out these chicken thighs. The skin, right? That's what it's all about, baby. That chicharron is nice and crispy. You can see the spices have kind of adhered to the crust. And yeah, it's not nearly as dark or probably nearly as crispy as the first technique, but for just chucking it in the oven and really doing no work, this is the way to go. Once again, we have to let it rest for five minutes. In the meantime, I totally forgot to hook you up with the recipes for all these techniques. So the first technique with the pan and the oven, I have a recipe for keto chicken thighs where we do that technique and paint them with white Alabama barbecue sauce that's spicy and tangy and serve that with a low carb black bean salad using um, black soybeans. For the chicken in the pan, for the boneless skinless chicken, I have keto Moroccan chicken stew. I have keto lunch meal prep that has fennel spice chicken with uh, an oven roasted cauliflower and broccoli salad that you don't have to heat up for work in school. I also have uh, chicken fried rice with cauliflower fried rice. For this one, you roast about two pounds or two and a half pounds of chicken thighs and then shred them like Wolverine with two forks and make the most amazing chicken salad or curry chicken salad. And I serve that with either uh, keto cloud bread or I have a Brazilian cheese bread roll that you make in the uh, blender that is gluten-free. That is bomb. So you've got to try out all those recipes. I'll put the links down below in the description box. All right, let's grab one of the chicken thighs, cut right into it. Oh, guys, come on, look at that. Perfectly cooked, but look at that juice. It is just juicy as can be, and that skin is golden brown and crispy. That is what I'm talking about. All right, let's try this bad boy art and get in here. First of all, mm. chicharron, listen. There's plenty of chicharrons for you, right? <laughs> Very good. Mm hmm. You guys, such a simple spice rub, right? the sweet paprika, the salt, and the pepper. But the chicken is cooked perfectly. It's golden brown and crispy, and all you have to do is follow those few, few techniques, chuck it in the oven, you're gonna get perfect chicken every time. You guys, if you wanna see more Bobby's Kitchen Basics, just leave a comment below. Let me know what you wanna see. I plan on doing like salmon three ways very soon. We have meatballs, we have chicken breast, we have mashed potatoes, but hook me up and let me know what you wanna see. Uh, the techniques and recipes are all down below in the description box. Share this video, baby. Art and I worked very hard. Sharing is caring. If you wanna see two more really cool videos, they are streaming below us right now, but we will see you soon. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking mad love. Peace, guys.